Okay, now we're going to explain how to move your counters around the board in the game of Ute. They go along these spaces, one step at a time. They can come around the outside, or according to certain rules, they can also take shortcuts through the middle. When I learnt the game of Ute, the board I learnt on was much bigger than this and accordingly the dice were also quite different. They look like this and they come out of this box here. And as you can see, if we just zoom up on there, there's a couple of kids having a great time playing a game of Ute. And that's, that's the scale of the game when I have learnt it and it was played on the floor. So I've shrunk it all down to a smaller format, but still quite playable. But with the dice, uh, the Korean writing you can see on the top, as you, I said before, the game's Korean in origin. And the dice are flat on one side and round on the other. So if you can imagine we're down on the floor, we pick up all the dice and we throw them and they land. Bang! 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 And some land flat side up and some land flat side down. Depending on how many are flat side up or down determines the outcome of the roll and how many spaces you can move. What I've done is simply substituted the sticks for some small counters and we can see them here. They're blue on one side and red on the other. And if we roll them or shake them as I'm doing here in my hand and then drop we get a result. In this case two red and two blue. What does this result mean? Okay, let's step it through. Let's say that the result was this. What it means depends on whose turn it is. If this was Red's turn, they would be allowed to move one space. One piece, one space. If it was Blue's turn, they would be allowed to move one piece, one, two, three spaces. One, two, three. Like so along the board. We'll explain how the movement on the board works soon. We just want to get a hang of the dice at the moment. Similarly, if it was a red's turn and the result was this. Two reds, two blues. Red would be able to move two spaces. If blue rolled this result, they would be able to move two spaces. If the result was this, red could move three and blue one. And if red rolled this, they could move four spaces. What would happen if blue rolled this? Would they move zero spaces? That would seem a little harsh to me, and obviously that was the same thing with uh, the people who devised the Ute game. And what actually happens is that if blue rolls four reds, they can actually move five spaces. A whole five. One, two, three, four, five. Around the board. So... If red had rolled four blues, how many spaces could they move? That's right, they could move five spaces as well. So it depends on whose turn it is. On your turn, pick up the dice, the counters, shake and roll. Red's turn, move three red, move one counter, one red counter, three, uh, three spaces. Blue's turn, this would mean move one blue counter, 
one space. Now, these counters are quite small. There's a few other ways you can do counters and a few other ways you can roll them. If you just want to get on to how to play the game, move to the next video. Otherwise, what's going to happen now is I'm just going to show you some other tricks and suggestions for different ways to make the same dice, the same kind of dice with different materials, or also suggestions about how to roll them if you find putting them in your hand a little fiddly. Okay, let's stick with the dice we've got at the moment. Sticking with the dice we've got at the moment, let's put them into a plastic container. Quite a transparent container. This one's just one I found lying around here. And it's got actually two, two compartments. Um, it doesn't have to be like this. This is just what I've got because I think having a, something that's not too big where the things are being rolled is, is useful. So they go inside the container. And then give the container a good shape and bam, we have our result. In this case, you can see them there, four reds. Next turn. Good shape. Stop. Three blues. Or one red. Oh, just change. Now that's one of the dangers here. If you move it, they can change a little bit. So, what you can do is say, count to five and then put it down. One, two, three, four, five. Put it down. And there's your result. So that's one way to deal with the, the dice. Sometimes, yeah, to deal with these little counters. And that's quite fun. Um, if you want to use larger counters and maybe tying in with a larger board, think about poker chips. These ones here are quite thick, sturdy ones. Sturdy, quite sturdy thick plastic and I basically blue tack them together. You could glue them also. Same basic principle, put them in your hand, give them a shake, place and there's your result. Again if you want to make it more uh, less hands-on uh, you could get a container. In this case I've got an ice cream container. In this ice cream container I've already got some counters. I've got these um, chip counter again double sided put them in the container and then take the lid off and that's your result we got three blues and a red put it back on you don't put the lid right on you can actually put it off quite easily and we got four blues and so on. Give them a good up and down flip and you stop. Of course it's kind of noisy but that's part of the fun. Three blues and a red and so on. You can see it's it is generally random. Oh but if you don't put the lid on properly they go flying. So that's another option. Another option using these kind of double sided counters. And on a larger board of course these can be your movement counters as well. Yep. So designing a larger board, these can go around. So that's a couple of ideas. Um, if you don't have any blue tack, of course the other thing you could possibly look at is just small rolled up pieces of paper for your counters. Um, and double sided, maybe just um, colouring some cardboard, thick cardboard and flipping those around might be another way you could do it. Or, old washers or coins, there's all kinds of ways. In fact, we've got another video on counters and a bit of a photo gallery which you should go looking for if you're trying to make different sorts of counters. We've got lots of ideas. Let's move on to the rules.